I'm introducing this one, I guess, the last minute. Hey, welcome back to another episode. We don't know what's going on, but we all eat meat and that's okay. Right? <laughs> so today we're having the multi-generational discussion. We're bridging that gap between the generations because we got some, uh, we got a couple of Gen Xers or several oh, Gen guys. Xers actually. Gen X. Then, uh, Old guy. Got a millennial or two. <laughs> And was anybody born after 1997? Holy smokes. After no, I guess not. Or before. <laughs> so, yeah, well, I was so. born the year I graduated from high school, a fact that I don't like to continually repeat. Uh, 96. I graduated oh, wow. in high school. So wow. we got we got them, uh, 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 I guess, some millennials. Kind of like that millennial Gen Z is like the 96, 97 transition period there. So. We could theoretically be uh, representing three uh, generations here. So anyways, we're just going to get into it and see what our experiences are different. Obviously, I think that there's probably going to be more people my age range because more of us had health time to accumulate health problems and, and more time spent looking for solutions. So obviously, the younger you are, the less likely you are to have arthritis or, you know, any of the other can IBS or whatever you might have. You know, so I mean, what do you guys think? I, should we open this up and ask the younger folk if they have any questions for us, old geriatric types? I th I think we should just start by saying what year we all graduated from high school. Mm. <laughs> that graduated. <laughs> How about Justin? The year you graduated from high school and a song that reminds you of your senior year. <laughs> senior year. Senior year. God, that's too long. Or Which your senior, senior year, year prom song, if you can remember it. I'll start then because nobody can remember. <laughs> okay. so you people I, closer to that date might be able to remember, but well, try to remember a song that reminds you of high school, even though it was really far away. So I'm Janice and I'm age 42. I graduated from high school in 1996, the year Bella was born, and potentially Lily as well. <laughs> Yes. And the song that I remember from my high school prom was Eric Clapton, More Than Words. Oh, wow. That's a good song. That's a good song. Yeah. It's timeless. <laughs> Who's next? Who's next? I'll, go, we... next. I'll go next. Go to Aaron. Yes, I want to hear it. 1984. Wow. You know, <laughs> I don't, I'm not trying to suck all the oxygen out of the room here. <laughs> uh, song uh english beat mirror in the bathroom i love that song oh awesome it's a great song yeah. still listen to it all the time does anybody else know that song <laughs> i do uh, everybody I else do. Does. Oh. 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 i like english oh. beat the background doesn't even know that it, who the english beat are it seems like. <laughs> okay. Okay. Beat? No. ska music yes Mm -mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. And Stefani wasn't no doubt originally ska. Yes, yes. totally. So Gwen uh, Stefani, <laughs> no doubt played our college parties. Yeah. Oh, oh cool. Yeah, you could awesome. get uh, no doubt and Sublime, you know, to play parties for you. And they they actually used to have another lead singer, a male, and they were very ska. Yeah. No doubt was one of my first CDs. I think we've lost the younger generation. Oh, what? Lily? <laughs> Lily my first CD, too. Right. Wow, cool. Impressive. But no cassette tapes. Oh. Uh, I've, I've got stuff on vinyl. I hate to say it. I don't yeah, even vinyl. have a record player. Uh, I, remember, I remember an 8-track that my dad was collecting. I remember pulling all the 8-track. Uh, thing out of it yeah. <laughs> the tape, the... <laughs> hey i have a demo tape of corn's first first demo actually oh nice oh, wow. nice i have an original rage against the machine demo tape oh. <laughs> okay i think we're losing the 20 somethings except for lily who seems to like vintage <laughs> yeah well i want to hear lily because i haven't had a chance to meet lily yet so let's let's hear a little lily story um, I graduated high school in 2014, um, <laughs> and I don't know, I, I don't think the song was even popular then. I just always, one of my favorite songs was Baby Got Back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Another timeless classic. Yeah, timeless classic. Nice. Awesome. All right. 
Well, at least to be heard at every wedding uh, reception you go to. <laughs> <these days. laughs> Along with Usher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Usher. Usher, Usher. <laughs> All right, how about how about uh, Bella? Let's hear let's hear it. Same as Lily, graduated from high school 2014. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I was 18 in 2014 and like Yeah. And <laughs> our high school graduation song was definitely Usher. DJ got us falling in love. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anything Usher, we were all obsessed with. I was probably at the club, but I was really old. <laughs> well, if you graduated in 2014, you graduated when you were 17. Really? Okay, yeah. Yeah. 17. Right. And that summer I turned 18 and then went off to New York. Right. Yes. Mm. And Lady Carnivory, how about you? What's your story? I am 28. I graduated in 2011. And I was a little emo kid when I was in high school. Really? Um, nice. <laughs> mm. Yep. So it would have been like Black Parade all the way. Oh. Yes. Great album. <laughs> Justin, like, <laughs> this is a great album. It's one of the great albums that like theme albums ever recorded, right? Really good. My Chemical Romance, the, the, that one. That yes. one we're talking about, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's one of the best theme albums to ever come out. Yeah, it's tough to do. My friend runs a world famous blog on My Chemical Romance, actually. Oh, cool. Yeah. So anyway, I guess it's time for me. Um, so it's Justin. Hey, me again, confident carnivore. It's always confident. time for you, Justin. It's always time for me. <laughs> confident carnivore can be confident at any age, which we shall uh, show during this uh, show. I guess, presentation, video, whatever. Uh, all the technology kind of mixes together, right? It's an um, epidose. <laughs> epidose, right. Um, so I graduated in 2006, and I didn't go to prom because I didn't ask nobody and nobody asked me, but I did go to a rave. Aww. I went to a rave, but um, our high school graduation song, was that Green Day one? Oh, man, I'm sure everyone oh, good knows. Good riddance. Yes, yes, that was it. <laughs> oh my so, God, Green Day was huge when I was a junior. The first album dropped. <laughs> Dookie? Was that Dookie? Dookie, yeah. Dookie. I loved it. I had the CD. <laughs> Do you have the time to listen to me rhyme about everything and not I think it's I'll listen to me rhyme. whine. Listen to me whine? Oh, I butchered it. Oh, ouch. You butchered it. Ouch. <laughs> You're a disgrace to your generation, my friend. That's not my generation. That's that's Janice's generation. Oh, well. He was raised by Gen Xers. That's right. <laughs> All right, Raymond. What's your story? When and uh, where and what? All right. I'm uh, four, 49. Uh, uh, graduated in uh, 91. And probably song, that's a hard one. Probably Def Leppard, uh, Pour Some Sugar on Me. Oh, no. Pour some sugar on me. Yeah. And they wonder why people have problems with carbohydrates. <laughs> That's not I've a actually been friendly. through three, po three proms. So. Wow. Wow. What? You got to go to three proms? <laughs> yeah. As a caterer. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Don't be jelly. Talk. Catering the meat. I mean a DJ. I'm sorry. You were cooler than that. DJ, there you go. DJ uh, Nazon. <laughs> I think I'm the only one left, right? So I I'm uh 50. I graduated in 89. And I couldn't tell you I did I think I did go to prom, but I couldn't tell you like what the if there was one special song for prom, but I do remember playing White Lines for some reason, which oh, yeah. is very yeah. inappropriate for a high school yes. function. But yeah. maybe, maybe they felt okay. it was like a warning song. But I have to say, my favorite. It's hard to say which song my favorite album is. Combat Rock from the Clash, so that kind of dates me a little bit. But that's a classic album, and yes, I had it on vinyl and cassette and cd <laughs> now i can just download it from amazon anytime anywhere so wow. good thing i spent all that money on all that media back in the day right i know you were a mixtape specialist probably right oh, i worked at the warehouse where records man 
Oh man, and we had a mixtape machine. People would come in and overpay for songs, and the machine would put it on a tape for you professionally. Oh wow! Even D- David Lee Roth would come in that store. In what? My- yeah. Well, I grew up in Pasadena, so like, I would have to say that the most important band. I can't remember what song came out when I was in high school, but it was Van Halen because. They lived in the area. We had teachers that had taught them. You know, they were older than us, but uh, everybody knew who they were. You'd see them at the mall. They'd come in the record store or whatever. You'd see them at the park with their kids. You know, a friend of mine, his Eddie Van Halen's mom lived like two doors away, you know, so we just, everybody wore Van Halen t shirt So pretty much almost no other music existed at that time. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, I have a theory, Tom, and we're going to test mm. out the theory. I always tell this to Aaron. since I he love and I are, experiments. He and I are 12 years apart, and I have a theory that there is one band that spans across all generations. So at my work, I had to pick out the songs for a name that tune, and we have, like, you know, multiple generations in the workforce. So it was, mm. I know music basically from, I figured out, like, six decades because of I'm a Gen X kind of right in the middle. And so I have a theory that there's one band that everybody knows and everybody likes. So we're going to test it out right now. Do you like and know the Eagles? Eagles, sure. of course. They're Ew, but like? Oh, well, no, just know. Do you know? I mean, do you know their music? Nope. Okay, Lily, I know you. It's Lily not your genre. Because Justin. Lily probably loves Queen. Them. I thought you were going to say Queen. Yeah, no. Queen, Beatles, Rolling Stones. Yeah, Beatles, no, Beatles. But Aaron doesn't Beatles. like the Beatles, and I grew up listening to the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. Well, Aerosmith. Rolling Stones Aerosmith. could be one. Well, Aerosmith, yeah. Okay, never mind. It doesn't work. But if I say, <laughs> but has everybody heard the song, Should I Stay or Should I Go? Of yes. course. Of course. Yeah. All right, well, fine, you can Tom. say The Clash. We'll say The Clash. <laughs> Yeah, the the who? That's better. a big one. What is? Who? Yeah. The who? Yeah. Who? Yeah. Who's a big one? Everyone yeah. knows that from CSI. <laughs> there is that. Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd? Yeah, sure. Yes. Pink Floyd. Neil Diamond. Neil Diamond. Yes, Neil oh, Diamond. That, one. awesome. that was a tough one. I don't. Think <laughs> Neil Diamond. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Never mind. My Maybe we should work. talk about the junk foods of our generation. There you go. Yeah. I remember when Capri Sun came out? Oh, I would freeze them. Did you freeze them? My mom would stick them in my lunchbox pretty soon. I broke out in a rash. So Wait, to drink what was that again. orange that came in that uh, ice? High C. Ooh. High C. No. Was that high C? No. It was. It Sunny was like D. ice. It was. Sunny uh, D. Dang. Sunny D. Oh, that tasted yeah. absolutely disgusting what? i love yeah. sunny d sunny d rocks sunny d is yeah. bullshit. what the hell is <laughs> chemical mix and- yeah that was a that's my chemical. go-to for insulin increase right there <laughs> right <laughs> give me some tang, sunny on d on the other hand tang was nasty tang, oh, tang, was tang. oh you had tang that was the drink of tang. astronauts right it was all this <laughs> yeah i begged my mom to get some tang because i saw the astronauts drinking it and then we tasted it and we're like whoa <laughs> I'm yeah. never going to space. <laughs> ever. Yeah, right. <laughs> you gave up on your astronaut dreams. <laughs> what is Tang? Is it like a soda? No, it's, it's like a dried juice. powdered orange juice. <laughs> powdered, yeah. You can't even call it orange juice. Really? I don't I've think you heard can of call tang? it orange juice. Wow. Yeah, you can't call it orange juice. <laughs> Bella, orange tang, tang is tang. Asian, Bella. You should know what Tang is. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> I really don't know what that is. <laughs> A younger generation food. I am all about the pop tarts. Oh yeah, pop tarts. Yeah, check it out. You know pop tarts. Pop tarts okay. stood the test of time. But oh, that's the tab. Test of time. You, there was this lady I worked with who still drank tab cola. You guys oh. <laughs> still exist. Yeah, I remember that from when I was a kid. Was like, cola. Was only like certain stores, like really far away, that she would drive to to go get you know buy a couple cases. Be I think now you can't. They've totally discontinued it like you can't wow. get it anywhere but that was the low calorie low sugar sort of yeah, it was one of the early diet like, sodas right diet soda of the day yeah it tasted tap. nasty oh it's disgusting it's yeah but bad. she was obviously addicted to it <laughs> oh, yeah. my mom used to buy this pepsi light it was oh it was yeah sort of, pepsi light, totally it, had, it was like it had lemon in it or something Dude, yeah no low sugar with lemon or something yeah back in the day when we used to have to take the empty bottles back to the store 
<laughs> yeah. Put them in the when big sticky bottles. bin. <laughs> yeah. Glass when bottles. Glass bottles. Yeah. 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 Did you uh, did yeah. you ride to the store in your horse and buggy? <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, buggies hadn't been invented yet. We had to walk. <laughs> We had no, they had the Fletchstone car. And <laughs> <laughs> it was uphill both ways. Yes. You know, and Aaron, was it always snowing? It snow. <laughs> Aaron still does say to me to paddle faster because we're making the Flintstones reference whenever we're walking together. Uh, did you if all I could have get that Girl drive Scout through. cookies? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jason. No, I was going to say, if I could have the ribs from the Flintstones uh, opening. Yeah, I, know. Oh, I looked them up. I they're, mammoth. they're mammoth. They're mammoth ribs. Know, those right? were ribs. I was like, what is that giant C-shaped thing they're throwing on his car? <laughs> <laughs> you obviously weren't a carnivore back then. You no, didn't right. recognize the signals. <laughs> if you ever, when it's time to leave work at the end of the day, do you ever say it's time to slide down the dinosaur? I do. No, I no. use the Quentin time bitmoji that that is referring to the Flintstones. Ah, uh, cool. You ladies need and Justin even know what the Flintstones are. Oh yeah, of course I've watched the okay. Flintstones. Oh, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> Cartoons are generational, no doubt. I would hope. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, did Bugs you guys Bunny was watching Bugs Bunny. Probably yeah. not, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Tom and Jerry. Oh, I the original that. transgender cartoon. <laughs> Bugs Bunny. <laughs> Bugs Bunny. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a good one. That's right. Did not know that. No, that's a good point, though. Yeah. Very so Justin, Justin, do you want to pose your question to to the older folks on behalf of the younger folks? Yeah. So you know, we we kind of get a, a head start on you older folks because we're we're getting healthy at an earlier age, so we get to eat steak and lobster on your graves. How does that make you guys feel? Uh, I, you know what, Justin, the reason why I help you so much is because I want you to stay healthy so I can drink your blood when I get weak. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I am jealous. Yes. Because when I meet these young, beautiful 20 somethings and uh, now Raymond's latest, uh, the couple who's only 19 years old, and then there's Tilly in Dubai, who's only 15, and she's a CrossFitter. I am like thinking, oh my God, if I were as young as you guys, it would just Envious. be amazing. So there is some component of en envy. I'm still glad to have found Carnivore. Um, I'm happy, and I feel, I feel young, <laughs> even though I'm not. So I think yes for me, for sure. And I'm also really happy for you guys. I think in some ways I look at you and I go, well, it's kind of good that you had some health problems and even though that sounds terrible because you were able to discover this so um how about you uh raymond and aaron <laughs> yeah i mean uh, I'm, I'm happy to uh have uh, uh i mean i'm so happy to see young people getting in on it because let me tell you, you talk about uh top performers there you know i feel like uh us as a human race have been uh, kind of devolving for a little while, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Uh, much of, m more, more and more people are getting fatter, sicker all the time, uh, straight off the get go. And it's nice to see that uh, carnivore is really the answer to get us out of all this. And not only that, pretty much put a next level in performance. And uh, I hate to say it, but you young folks will be showing that. So. It it's really sad. So there was an article that recently came out about how 40% of millennials experienced a lot of weight gain during the COVID lockdown, you know, and I think it's 40. Yeah. There was something like 40% of millennials, or at least that were surveyed, of course. Um, not everybody. I don't remember anyone asking me, um, but 40% uh, had experienced significant weight gain. And I think it's that, you know, we're the generation with the most technology, right? So we're totally on the internet, the Instagram, you know, Facebook, everything. Well, maybe not Facebook if you're a millennial. That's for you Gen Xers. Um, we're on TikTok now. Catch up, catch up. Come on now. Um, but... <laughs> No, no, uh, you're insulting them, there, uh, Justin. <laughs> uh, and and so you know, a, a lot of us have you know kind of more cozy office jobs, or or you know in school, and now all the school is online, right? And so there's not a lot of just as we we are you know really getting into clicks and social interaction. COVID comes along where it's like you know you're told to stay home because otherwise you'll kill grandma, right? And so. You know, I, I think just 
it's too easy to get sucked into the virtual world and we haven't grown up enough to get into a good fitness routine, you know? Um, and so that's why I think millennials and, and um, even younger, this is going to be a real struggle for them to get back to health. And, you know, this is why a lot of us younger folk have to show the way that, Hey, you can get healthy again. You can get back there, you know? Um, but yeah, it's really, really sad. And I just want to throw that out there real quick. I gotta so say that. I was raising a hand. <laughs> um, Sorry. I she just learning... got out of school. Let's forgive her. Thank you. Um, I was wondering for the older generation, if I, I kind of feel like, obviously there's not that many of us young people who are eating this way. And like, I feel like a lot of young people think I'm invincible. I can eat chips and cookies and pizza and get away with it right now. Um, and so a lot of my friends do not do this, would never consider it, think like, you know, restrictive and all that stuff. Um, and we'll see who's laughing one day, but do you guys find your friends are more understanding or you, you they, they go out to eat with you and like, what is it having friends and being your age? No, not at all. I think it's a similar, it might be coming from a different place. Like I, you're saying I think there's that invincibility feeling of the young person that you haven't had a lot of ailments and you know until you really start hitting 30 you know for most people that's when stuff starts to show up for you and you can't do you're like what I can't eat that or you know I'm starting to put on weight after I just stuff my face where you know you could really get away with a lot of that stuff but you know I was just talking to two um, pilots yesterday down at the airport and they were inviting me out to lunch and I was, you know, oh, you know, I'm a... but we started talking about diet and carnivore and all that. And they're just looking at me like you're a total extreme on the fringe cuckoo bird lunatic, <laughs> you know, so I don't. And I think that goes with most people because it's pretty ingrained in our generation about the standard American diet and to deviate from that, even though it's like, oh, they're willing to accept like keto and some other things where you still maintain a vegetable base or, you know, integration into the diet, just eliminating everything and eating, you know, more meat centric is, you know, that's going to give you a heart attack and, you know, it's really bad for you. So it's tough. Um, and to go back to the earlier thing for me, you know, that <clears throat> I'm, I'm really stoked that young people are involved because I think it, it can sort of create a, a little bit of a, a paradigm shift for how we interact with food and, and what, you know, people should be eating. And I think the examples that the younger generation is going to set, because there's all kinds of things that we're faced with now that weren't, you know, if I look back on photos and things from when I was a kid in the 70s, it's like you did not see somebody who was obese, you know, on a in a beach photo or whatever. There was like not a lot of that. There wasn't a lot of these other kind of crazy things. But um, for me as an older person or a midlife, but now I'm changing it. It's not really midlife. If I live to like you know, 150, then I'm only like a third of the way through. Mm -hmm. So, so that's also how I'm starting to think is like, well, I can start to shift the longevity, you know, rate of how long people live, because we haven't really experimented with, you know, changing what we eat in modern society. And who knows what, what you know, it feels pretty good because I feel like I'm 25 again on this diet. So if that's the case, then, you know, how, and I told my doctor the, when I went in for all these tests and everything, and they're looking at all my numbers and like, oh my God. And I said, well, I'm going to live to about 500. So, you know, this is just kind of the beginning data points for you guys to start dealing with. Um, and, I, you know, I mean, I was kind of teasing, but in reality, I've really changed my view about what my lifespan looks like, which is kind of a cool concept to start to think about, you know. 
I just read something, I think in Judy Cho's book that said that uh, human organs are set up to be, to live or to last 125 years. Yeah. Like just by the way they're designed. And I was like, oh yeah. So that makes us, you know, whatever, what are we like a third of the way through? And then you guys are just toddlers yeah. <laughs> or children. I like Dependence. to say, I like to say we've all been the victims of bad information, you know? Yeah. And so every time we take an opportunity, like just to say something, we're combating that bad information. But I always reflect, you know, on the fact that I started uh, keto and transitioned to carnivore the year after my mother passed away after fighting cancer for 25 years and never heard of the Warburg effect, never heard of the book of cancer as a metabolic disease, none of that wouldn't even dream of a high fat diet. And it wasn't too long before that. My grandmother died of Alzheimer's. I now have seen signs of, uh, of, uh, dementia in my father. And he just was like, Oh yeah, it's just normal. It's part of getting old, you know? And my buddy that actually started keto with the one that uh, we started together, he was the one who heard, heard about this book. We both got it and read it. His dad was diagnosed with pre leukemia. And we got him that book, uh, Any Which Way You Can by uh, Dr. Boz. He was all excited to try keto. The doctor talked him out of it. And now he's stage four. Mm. So Ooh, frustrating. that's the alternative, right? Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what question. we're really combating. What's that? I'm sorry. I was going to say I have a question, but go ahead. No, that was it. I was just saying that's what I think about. I think it's been really interesting um, kind of growing up more in social media. And I think with that comes a more, um, a bigger narrative, right? Like everyone has the same narrative of body positivity and healthy at every size. And I know that growing up in that, that was difficult for me because when you are experiencing health issues at a young age, and I don't know, I don't wanna speak for everyone, but I was overweight, but I was being told that you can be healthy at any size. So it just didn't, makes sense to me but i kind of want to know what you guys think about that and how you experience it it's interesting because this comes up a lot you know it's like that fine line between is some people believe the only way to help people that are overweight is to shame them but we also know that that's exactly what causes it sometimes right so it's not going to work with everybody so and you know not everybody's going to have the same body type, same body shape or same body per fat percentage or whatever. It's just that being overweight is indicative of a lifestyle typically, but not always, right? So anybody who's not living that destructive lifestyle and not eating the wrong diet. And I always say the diet comes first, right? You got to diet's like 90% of the battle. You got to be on the right diet so you can exercise or you're just not going to get very far. You're not going to make progress, right? So, um, I think that's a confusing message too, because it's okay to fat shame people if they're overweight. I mean, strangers do it all the time. And you know, kids, kids almost have no filter sometimes that so they'll do it, but uh, adults do it too. So, um, so I think that it's important to tell people it's like, yeah, uh, the, the person at the gym who's got a few extra pounds, who's eating right, you know, is not, is not the concern. It's, you know, it's the person who never gets out of their house and sitting on the couch and, um, thinking that by eating salads at any weight, they're going to be healthy. That's probably the real problem. I, I kind of want to have a comment about just uh, how I feel for younger generations. And um, so when I was a kid, the most decadent food that I remember eating was chocolate frosted flakes. They were chocolate frosted flakes. I had to get them. I begged my grandma to buy me them because I was like, oh man, this is going to be so good. I ate the entire box, I think in like three days. And my grandma was like, never again. That box of cereal was $4 and you ate it too fast. And so, no, I only ever had it, which was probably good. I mean, you know, I don't understand. It's more economic reason. Rather You're still here because there was only one box. <laughs> right, exactly. But then, you know, now I think they have like, you know chocolate cinnamon toast crunch and they have like uh 
red velvet Oreos. You know what I mean? If they had red velvet Oreos when I was a kid, there'd be no way. Like I'd be addicted. There's no way you could get me away from that. Like just some of these desserts and Franken foods they have now where they're mixing like all these different flavors and sweets, like, oh, put marshmallows and chocolate and cinnamon and just like <laughs> everything. Like just, it's really like, I look at it in the stores and I'm like, Okay, I'm glad I found Carnivore because I would probably go off a cliff and never come back, you know, just because it would be too addicting and too delicious. And when I was a kid, there was no Krispy Kreme. I mean, there was the typical donut shop down there that, you know, would go get Sundays or whatever, special treat, go get a donut. But there was no, you know, Krispy Kreme. And those are, I've had a few donuts from Krispy Kreme before Carnivore, obviously. And they're, they're pretty good. But if you ever see the ingredients on there, man, that is a science experiment. Mm-hmm. I think we're, they're so addicted that, Aaron, didn't we go, what, two or three summers ago that we went to the, his family cabin in Michigan and we went to the store and we bought Captain Crunch with the rainbow colored berries. And we, we ate it because it was like, we we're on vacation and we're like, yeah, we're going to have it. We're just going to eat it. And we, well, he ate most of the box, but I had some too. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to ask a question for the, for the younger four here. So I look at you all and I think, you know, we're already an age where we're like, we're old enough where we're like, fuck it. Like we need our health. We know this is the right solution. And we don't, you know, even if people look at you sideways, like they were with Aaron and they do with us all the time, we're just like, I don't care. Cause I feel good. I feel super young and I feel, you know, so it's like, you're, at, you're already at the age where you don't care as much what other people think, but well, all of Janice, you know, share the story about, you know, what we were just talking about earlier that they that you know it was said i don't remember who said it but like you know come talk to me you know in 20 years or whatever right or i'll be laughing when i'm doing well and then you had somebody that you had shared with a long time ago and they came back to you and said like so what is it that you're doing at work right that yeah we have that actually and you've had that as well where people because when you're older and you look you know, fairly youthful and you look really, you seem like you have a lot of energy and you look healthy or your body's still in pretty good shape. People will be like, what are you doing again? Yeah. Right? Because they're already struggling. They're on like cholesterol medication, blood pressure medication. And so they're a little bit more open, but looking for you guys. And I, you know, I've been talking to Aaron's twins who are 15 and they were telling me, thank you, Justin. I already knew that TikTok and Snapchat were the things now. I also learned that people don't share their cell phone numbers anymore. And I was like, why can't you just text a photo of what you're eating and text what you're doing? And he said, no, it's Snapchat because people don't give their phone numbers anymore so it's like i learned and then one of them gave me a tutorial about tiktok and so i started to put in my interests and he's like don't click all of those it's gonna bring, it's gonna like load up your feed with all this baloney so i ended up giving up on it but nonetheless i want to ask you for because you did grow up where it's like image is everything there's all this pressure in social media and you're you're kind of all very putting publicly putting yourself out there yourselves out there with this very kind of extreme thing. So how is that for you? What kind of flack do you get? I mean, how do you deal with like haters? What is it like for you younger people? Well, Lily and I were just talking about this last time we hung out on Zoom. So Lily shared with me that some famous dietitian type of YouTube channel reviewed her what she eats in a day uh, or what she eats in a week, right? Allie? I don't yeah, know. She's not a dietitian or anything. She's just uh, like a regular Joe Schmo. I mean, I, I mean, she's it seems very nice, but you know, she's eating Jif peanut butter and like promoting that as like a health uh, option for people, and then critiquing my video of a carnivore video. So she didn't criticize or bad talk you. No, that's good. I mean, just at the end, she said that I said because she cut my video. Basically, she had my video playing, and then she cut the video off right at the end. But she yeah. she was saying I said. I can eat as much of these foods that I want and I won't get fat because they're so satiating. And I just have, I can have a hard time overeating them, but she cut me off when I said, I can eat as much as I want and never get fat, cut it off. And she's like, this girl, like, of course, calories in calories out. She's going to get fat if she does that. And I was like, yeah. well, you cut me off with what I said. And, they, and then all these people were commenting, oh, she doesn't know what she's talking about. So yeah, that's what they always do. I also got reviewed by two really big vegans. It's always the vegans with me. And I think it's because I come from an ex-vegan type of history. Um, but the first guy, he was 
you know, pretty kind. He just kind of reviewed my whole carnivore, what I eat in a day. But like the second lady is really the banana girl herself. Wow. And she is pretty big in the vegan. Angry vegans. freely. Nice. Oh yeah. She's very angry and she, she just loves attention uh. by bad mouthing others. So of course her followers requested for a carnival girl and she didn't do her research because she was not aware that I went vegan because of her. Um, so she was like, oh, this girl was never vegan and she's not actually eating meat. She's doing it all for fame, you know? And all of the comments were just like, <laughs> mm, you didn't do your research. A lot of the people told me about that video and they were like, hello, I even know that you went vegan because of Freely. So it's a lot of these like review videos and hate videos, hate, whatever. They don't do their research. They just do it so they get more views. So by now it's like, if there's hate, I don't even like click it. I don't open it. If there's like hate comments, I never turn on my notifications anymore. Um, I was talking about this with Tom and Janice and Raymond just last night. Like I get comments about me eating Simba all the time. <laughs> I don't know if people are going to, you know, comment like that as a joke or as like seriously thinking that I'm going to eat my own dog. Um, but it's just, it's funny at this point. Uh, wow, you're strong to take that, you know? I mean, I don't think, I mean, I think back to myself at your age and it's like, I totally cared what everybody thought. And I was like very susceptible mm -hmm. and there was no, har hardly any social media. Maybe it was MySpace back then or Friendster. <laughs> Oh. oh man Friendster. wow, wow. We how about you lady carnivory what what's it like for you uh well in social media i get the vegan hate too i don't know why it always devolves into cannibalism they're like well would you eat a human and i'm like you wish i would eat you like go away what are you <laughs> not doing not saying here? i wouldn't i mean <laughs> <laughs> really i don't know um, why it goes there mess around <laughs> and find out <laughs> right uh okay <laughs> But in my real life, it's been very interesting because when I first started my carnivore journey, I was like, hey, guys, I'm only eating meat. And everyone was like, you, you need to see a professional. Like, you need to get help. This is not okay. And now, you know, a year and a quarter in, and I post pictures and people like you, Janice, they come to me and say, well, what are you doing again? Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. That's an awesome turnaround. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, for me, that's why I share my story. It's like, I just want everyone to know carnivore is an option. That's right. So I have a question as like an honesty check for everybody. If a couple years in or however long in you start seeing some changes or things that are happening that you don't like or you're not feeling quite healthy or something's going sideways, <clears throat> is this are you of the mindset of like, this is just part of a, a bigger experiment and you're open to making shifts or is it tough getting tied into some identity and some ideology? And then, you know, because you could, if there's the vegetarians or the vegans on the other side that are gonna fight tooth and nail about their diet and the benefits of it, it's the same it's sort of the same argument, but it's a different food source, you know, and everyone's really sort of hardcore about it. And I'm of the mind of just like, well, I'll try anything. And if it starts giving me, you know, energy and vitality and my inflammation's going away and I can you know, do all these things that I haven't been able to do in 20 years or my focus is clear. And, you know, what do you guys feel about your level of um, not holding on to something and, you know, experimenting with because obviously you got here at a young age, not just by happenstance or maybe so, but you've tried different things and seen different results. And is this the the final be all end all for everybody? Dun, dun, dun. I'm, I'm definitely open to experimenting um <laughs> like i i try fasting and i try um i do back to base steaks which is mostly beef eggs butter and salts and mm. then i don't know I, coming from a vegetarian background and being so like sucked into that ideology but feeling so terrible all the time yeah 
like it makes it blows my mind like how did I stay eating that way even though I felt like crap all the yeah. time but I think it's so easy with carnivore because you feel so great all the time um if it can get better cool I'm down with that but yeah. I don't know if it can <laughs> it does. that's kind of like what I'm searching for because I've been inspired by so many sources, including Janice and Raymond, that there are so many higher levels to carnivore. So I, I honestly don't see myself ever getting bored with carnivore because there's so mm. many different ways to do it. There's so many different types of fasting alone to incorporate mm. with eating carnivore. Um, but like when I do think long term, I'm always thinking towards when I become a mother, when I when I have kids, because that is something that I I am looking forward to. And I always think like, what if I'm pregnant and I stop craving for meat and all I'm craving for is something that's not animal based. Mm -hmm. I mean, if that happens, yes, I'm willing to just eat it for the sake of me not throwing up in the bathroom or, you know, for, for having a healthier kid. Sure. But when that time comes, I'll do my research and I'll make sure I'm doing the right thing and I'm eating the right things. But right now I feel like I can be carnivore until like, the end of time it just feels so great so easy so if fun we run out of cows yeah <laughs> we run out of cows, i'm eating so. a lot of them <laughs> yeah Lily, you know, when the vegans Lily. attack my, my tactic is always to just keep sending them studies so like they just they make some criticism and i send them something from pubmed <laughs> they just get exhausted so fast and give up Tom's white paper war <laughs> warfare. Well, I'll it's interesting. I mean, I, I, I feel like too, in sort of the, when I've asked that question or when I think about it and listening to a lot of people have discussions about it and through our own interviews and things, it's, this isn't where people are starting out and they've just latched on to something, you know, it's like, I, it's almost like the group is, it's pretty obvious that everybody's totally into to optimizing and figuring something out and really being honest with their body about that. And I, I really love that about, you know, this community is that it's people come from all kinds of backgrounds and all different experiences and everything. And they've, it's like, well, this is where for right now, this is where we've all landed, but I don't think anyone seems like they're totally, you know, in a fixed mindset about this is the, the, the end, just as you were sharing Bella, that this is, you know, not, you know, there's still more to learn and optimize. And I know Raymond's always, you know, pushing that envelope all the time which is super cool or janice doing you know ribeye only and everybody standing back and watching and like how's that gonna work and you know so everyone still has that sort of experimental mindset which is just super cool to learn and grow from you know everybody out there that's doing different things yeah and like what uh, about what about trying like taking out like say coffee or whiskey <laughs> <laughs> Raymond, ah. Raymond, now's the time to step in, Raymond. Okay, how about, how about Raymond's you, a bit Lily? of a purist. <laughs> how about I, I, you, Lily? Well, I want to hear. Oh, I, and then... I actually did not come into like eating a carnivore way from having like any mental health, mental illness, or disease or anything. I just, um, my boyfriend has more of that going on, so I, it was just kind of easier for us to cook the same and grocery shop shop the same and. So it was kind of awkward me eating my Krispy Kreme donuts that I was eating every day. And so then eventually I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll just like stop slowly, but surely over months, it took me a long time. Um, and then at this point, like I, I'm not super, super strict carnivore either. And I know some of these, some of the ladies know this too, but I have told them too, that when I don't like right now, I was telling Bella this yesterday, but I had dandruff for a really long time and I used head and shoulders dandruff shampoo my whole life. And then once I started eating carnivore, my scalp started burning and itching like crazy. And for months, I just kept putting in the chemicals in my head. And then one day we were like, what if I just stopped putting these chemicals in my head? And my boyfriend was like, your diet has changed. You probably don't need dandruff shampoo anymore. So I stopped using it, super nervous that the dandruff was gonna come back and it never did, <laughs> but, for months now, for probably 
six months, my head still itches in the back of my head. So for this month, I have been experimenting with adding onions, um, garlic powder, and like some just like just antifungal like seasonings that I think is going to help with the itching going going down. So it's been helping me a little bit. Um, but I feel more tired. I feel less like more brain fog. I feel like I'm not waking up super alert, Buddha belly or bloating. I'm going to the bathroom like three times as much now. So like even from just a small amount of vegetables, like today, I didn't have any vegetables whatsoever. I didn't have any seasonings, but yesterday, well, I would say 95% of the time I'm only eating meat. So maybe like two to two times a week, I'll have some celery or some onions. And I just, even with such a small amount can notice such a big change. And it's like, wow. Perhaps you need to apply the onions and garlic topically. I have thought about that. Soak your head. <laughs> well, I'll take any advice. Can... Anybody have tips, I will put garlic all over my head if that means like it's itching gone. Um, I just wanted to comment on on the carnivore community as a whole. So we have some people that have, I don't know if you'd call it defected, but I mean, you know, Paul Saladino is a big name, right? And his honey and, and you know, his carbs and stuff like that, the changes he's done over the last year. And then you have the Strong Sisters, right? And I don't see anyone really taking away their carnivore cards. You know what I mean? Um, there's people that want to, or there's, they get like, you know, the occasional, you know, boo or whatever. But for the most part, I think the carnivore community is the health seeking community and so it's just like well it's making them feel better that's cool i don't know if i could do that or i want to do that or i don't know the science behind that but if they want to take this experiment in that direction yeah, yeah. go for it and i'll support them yeah. you know um i'm not going to say boo or whatever yeah i might not buy the next book but i'm not gonna you know be there like you know, like an angry cat, you know, chopping away at the <laughs> typing boards, you know. Um, and then uh, about the, uh, the the social question that Janice had. Um, so I've always been an outcast <laughs> for like everything. Um, and by the time I found Carnivore, all my friends had kind of rowdy dawn down. It's like we'd kind of peaked and partied and we were all just kind of not partying anymore just because, um, you know, loss of friends, addictions. Um, I just want to take a, sec a second to shout out to my buddy Squall, who's um, entering detox tonight. So blessings to him for getting his alcoholism under control. And so, you know, I was in that life. I was in the party life for a good decade. Um, I've lost a lot of friends. I've lost friends to addiction and just, you know, straight death due from, you know, drugs and alcohol. And, you know, my migraines and carnivore, I don't have to worry about that anymore. You know, I know I'm not going to down a bottle of Jaeger, you know, and try to go party somewhere and end up, you know, on, who knows where, you know what I mean, wherever the night would take me. Um, and, and, you know, throwing up all over friends' houses and all that stuff. You're a much better party guest carnivore than you were before carnivore, right? Um, there you are, you know, you're cleaning up the vomit now instead of making it, which, I mean, I don't know if that's fun, but it makes you more, you, you feel kind of like better. And I, I saw one of my friends and, uh, recently who's who actually has gone vegan so he's actually gone the opposite way of me and he told one of her other friends damn it justin looks really good which is funny because he was always the pretty boy of the group and now i'm the pretty boy i'm the bell of the ball now of the group and so he's decided to go vegan which is kind of making him like look worse even though he doesn't see it yet and here i am you know i'm rising and my i'm seeing a lot of friends falling and i've kind of talked about this before that when you're very ill in your 20s or, or younger it looks like you're falling behind in life or and you might legitimately be falling behind in life and then now with carnivore your friends unfortunately not that we wish any ill will on our friends right or family members but now that we found carnivore and they're still standard american diet or vegan or whatever they're trying to do now they're starting to have health issues you know, now they're starting to get type two diabetes. Now they're starting to get, you know, arthritis. Now, you know, this, that, now they're having to go get prescriptions. And now you're going the opposite way. And so now like, now I'm surpassing people that I felt like that I had a chip on my shoulder that I was really falling behind on. And now I'm, I'm really rising. You know, I feel like a rising star now. And 
So I think that's just, that's just so cool. And, you know, it's like, but all of us, right, also have the feeling of come fly with us, right? You could rise too. We want all of us to achieve as much as all everybody can. I hear you, Justin. Sure. I think about my, my 30s because I started being vegetarian in my late 20s. And then I carried on through my late 30s. And I feel like those were like my lost years, you know, because mm -hmm. I just declined so much. And I became so like wimpy and, you know, weepy and just pathetic that it's just like, and it was hard because I felt like when I was younger and my body was more forgiving, you know, I was considered somebody with a lot of potential, you know, I mean, it was a good student valedictorian in my high school. Everybody was like, oh, you know, she's going to be successful. And it was just like, I just felt myself deteriorating, you know, and like my performance was going down in all areas. So, so I do, that's why when I look at, you know, you, you all who, you know, you're in your twenties and thirties and it's like, the sky's the limit for you, you know? And, and I, I feel similarly that it's like, you know, Aaron and I, we, we walk around and we feel like we're starting to rise while other people are starting to, to like, and especially with the pandemic and you start to see people that like coworkers, when I see them back and it's like people put on 20, 25, 30 pounds, you know, cause they haven't been going to the gym anymore and whatever was kind of sustaining them. Um, so I guess we should ask the most hardcore carnivore coach Raymond, whether he would ever turn back if it was suddenly discovered that honey <laughs> oh was a magic food or Bart's uh, Bart case, a rule product with stem cell algae <laughs> from the Klamath area. Would you, <laughs> would you forget about carnivore and ribeye? So I, I'm only, the only reason I'm so hardcore, just to be clear, is because I don't like the idea of, I'm picky. I like ribeyes. It's just that simple. Um, I, I'll do the cheese, but you know, I, I can't actually wait to get the Anderson protocol again uh, for six months, like what you're doing right now uh, with the ribeye. Um, because this is, this is what I know I feel best and perform the best. So I want to say for, for me, you know, there, there's some people, I don't know if you guys have noticed. So like, like you, you'll go through high school and they always tell you that that's going to be the best years of your life or college or whatever, the best years of your life. And really none of that was the case for me. So I guess I was a late bloomer. The best days of my life was after I turned carnivore. And I'm telling you, I mean, uh, just like, uh, just like Aaron was saying about feeling 25. I mean, I'm outperforming my twenties out. I mean, by a long shot, things that I can do is just unbelievable performance wise. And not only that, I would not ever have, uh, imagined myself being, um, you know, a coach, much less, a, a leader in any community. You know, I was always overlooked by and bypassed by everybody. Never I really had the confidence, always kind of hiding in the background kind of thing. And all of a sudden, this is like this different guy shows up. It's like I traded places with somebody just badass. I mean, that's just the way I see it. It's like I I just, I mean, I, I don't know. Carnivore has made that much of a difference for me. So, no, I, I wouldn't even think, dream of any honey or anything like that. If anything, would I want to go use, to the point. Would you use honey topically, though? Yeah. Yeah, I actually do. Uh, Manuka honey is actually very, very handy, supposedly for any infection. So um, I say that, but I don't know if I got a cut, I get a more, uh, when I've had a cut before, you, I used to put uh, Manuka honey on it, but now I'm just curious about how quickly it will heal by itself. So <laughs> I can't say I even do that anymore. Because even or beef tallow. Or, or tallow. Yeah. Well, I, I, I used to do that too, but then, uh, then, uh, then I just started getting more and more curious. I'm like, Ooh, I want to see you. So I'm, I don't want to say I'm excited when I cut myself, but I'm like, Ooh, let's see how long this is going to last to heal. You know, it's like, let's see how far I've gotten on this diet, you know, that kind of thing. So on I'm next gonna... week's episode, Raymond will have no arms or legs. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> see if I can grow them back, right? <laughs> no. Well, Aaron, we have to ask you your, your, your own question because I, I met Aaron, I think when you were maybe 40, right? I think I was probably like 28 and he was 40. And I remember he was super athletic and doing all this crazy stuff. And I remember thinking he, I already remember thinking he was hot when I met him. I was like, he looks good, you know? 
um, really athletic and everything, but now it's crazy. I mean, he's turning 55 this year and he's like ripped in his athletic performance. And so, I mean, I literally have seen him all these years and I notice a difference and he, maybe he doesn't, but I'm like, you look better <laughs> like physically. And just like, you know, I mean, I feel like there's definitely something about carnivore that I'm like, he was always really athletic and he was always in good shape and he was always tan, but he looks even better. Believe you me. <laughs> so, uh, before we ask Tom, well, what would you do sugar? <laughs> well, yeah, I think that's, you know, it's interesting because, well, a couple things to say about that. Number one, what I love about what kind of got me interested first off, not only just like, Oh, we're just going to eat meat. Cool. That sounds good to me, but I really like the, the aspect that it was if you viewed it as an elimination diet like well that's a really cool sort of reset point and a starting point to then reintroduce some stuff after you do it for 30 days and then start bringing some stuff back in and see what happens and i was like oh that's kind of a cool idea maybe i could figure out some allergies that the doctors can never figure out and scratch their heads and poke you with all these things and see if you get a welt and all this stuff but you know it's like well if you already have all this crap in your body how much is your body going to respond to a prick test or whatever you know and so just that notion alone was really intriguing to me that it's like that starting to which everybody has talked about already on this conversation is just that there is this sort of element of experimentation and willingness to be open and try new things and that if you only have one food source then you introduce something else it's like well you can see what how your body reacts and responds and that's kind of a really unique thing that we as humans or maybe the our you know all of our big money that's into food in this country or whatever that is you know influencing our food decisions that taking control of our own bodies and deciding what types of fuel and things that we're going to use to put in it and disassociating all of the emotional ties to food and all these different things. It's like, wow, this is a really sort of kind of cool experiment. Sign me up for it because I'm the master of my own body and I'm the most powerful healer of my own body. And I am the most in touch with it. I don't need some outside source telling me what I should and shouldn't do because none of that shit's been working. Yeah, the money behind it. Exactly, Lily. Thank you. Because how do I trust somebody that's, you know, making, you know, sees me for 10 minutes doesn't even remember the last time I came in like, oh, you're a new patient. And I said, no, I've seen you like three <laughs> times before. But you, because you only see me for five minutes, you wouldn't remember who I am, you know. And it's like that doctor relationship is really, you know, totally tweaked and how things have gotten. And it's just like, well, I think a lot of us, it's like, well, you have to take matters into your own hands. And so I think it's, you know, that part of the odyssey, I guess, that we're on is really exciting because it's like we're on some sort of, you know, interstellar exploration on some leading edge of just like, well, you know, we're frustrated or we haven't gotten the answers. And it's like you're kind of taking matters into your own hands and then having a base you know, intake of just meat. And then you, if it's like, oh, you want to, you think avocado looks good and you think that's a benign thing and you want to introduce that and bring that in, well then try it and see if you break out in a rash or your stomach feels crappy, or maybe it doesn't provide the same thing that you used to like, oh, I'm going to go buy a $12 avocado toast. And that makes me feel like so like a hipster i don't know anyone who ever did that <laughs> <laughs> you know and so all of it i mean the psychology i mean just everything is just like it's such a it's such a cool you know thing that i think everybody in this group is like open to that play with that and i guess the second thing i was going to say is i i won't forget 
you know, after my, I had, you know, back surgery and then I was in a pretty severe plane crash and we happened to go, you know, convalesce at Janice's cousin's house for whatever reason. I don't know why, but they had to deal with me in sort of this really compromised state all the time. And then after we had been doing carnivore for a while, I was running around the house with their dog and like, you know, jumping on the couch and diving and throwing the ball and, and they're just stopped and they're just looking at me and they're like, oh my God, like Aaron looks like he's like 18 years old, you know, like what, awesome. what have you been doing, you know? And it's like, I wasn't trying to put on some performance or, you know, hey, look at me or anything like that. But like, as you guys all have said and what you feel, it's just like, that they you know getting that confirmation from the outside world about you know people that have seen you in different phases of your existence you know to then see something that's showing up and it's it's a it's a you know just like justin was saying it's like you you're this rising star or whatever and people start standing back and taking note and um you know yeah, I think it's a really cool process and I appreciate all of you guys participating in it and having that open mind and that experimental attitude and wanting to try new things and push the envelope and yes. see what whoever's doing. I mean, I, I think that's really a, a really cool thing. And if you look at anything, whether it's people, you know, going for the speed record, you know, in the you know at the bonneville salt flats or whatever it's like they're all doing the exact same thing they're talking to each other and they're like what do you what do you use for fuel and how do you optimize this and you know drag coefficient and all this stuff and that that's always pushing that leading edge of everything that's out there no matter what type of interest you have and i think that's really cool about you know what you guys are all up to I love how you say that, Aaron. I just want to uh, add a little bit to that, um, saying that this is our first chance to actually explore what the perfect human diet could be, too. Yeah. So I'm actually doing these experiments on myself, but repl you know, seeing replications amongst younger people that it's happening even greater and better. That's just a wow, eye-opening for me. You know, Ravens, guinea pigs. <laughs> well, I don't mean to make it. I'm sound one of like them. That. I don't mean to make it sound like that, but you know, uh, I mean, uh, like, like for example, uh, some of you probably don't know this, but I, I, I'm doing an experiment where I'm not going to brush my teeth or floss for like a whole year. Yeah. And yes, I am married. So just to let you know, uh, <laughs> not for long. It's, it's just, it's just, I know, not for long. It's just, it's just, you know, this will prove if this diet is that horrible for us. My teeth should be falling out. I should have really poor teeth. And right. I don't believe so far it's been four months. No problem yet. Yeah. So we'll see at the end of the year. So I'm just giving examples. I have not. Can we not... talk to your wife though? <laughs> if you can make <laughs> it through she Halloween. Notice, I kiss her. She doesn't notice. So <laughs> fine. Um, so you know you're not brushing your teeth. <laughs> I know. I also, I also haven't, uh, uh, I haven't uh, used any soap products, uh, shampoo or which Lily, you'll probably like hearing that uh, <laughs> shampoo or soap on my body. I just soap my, for my hands um, for it's been a year and a half now. So no, problem. I shower once a week, by the way, BTW. Mm -hmm. Same kind of thing because like, you don't like, need it. like Lily yeah. was saying, it was like, well, I get irritated after I shower and I feel better when I don't. And then we all have these hangups about personal hygiene and what we're supposed to be doing. And it's like, well, what if that's, what if that shifts and you don't need to do that, you know, exactly. or it comes down to a personal taste. I mean, people like, you know, oh, I like showering, it feel good. But if it starts to be an irritant or you don't see the benefits and the people around you don't notice anything totally, Janice maybe could chime in. I don't in like on. when you shower. I, all of his products started to give me like chemical reactions. 
um, like just the smell would like make me feel sick, especially since going carnivore. And he smells so good unshowered. And I don't like when he washes off his natural smell. It's so irritating. I'm like, stop showering because it like washes off whatever pheromones. First whatever. time that was ever said in the history of modern man. <laughs> oh truly i don't like no, when he showers because shower, right. then he like i can smell any note of anything that's in the weird chemically like Is that irish spring or deodorant <laughs> yeah oh, oh my gosh irish spring is your worst smell <laughs> it's disgusting <laughs> the youngsters even know what irish spring is <laughs> guys know irish spring yeah there used to be a lot of soap a lot of commercials in the 80s they, they don't advertise i feel like they yeah. don't advertise soap as much as these but there's Tom, some like whistling in the background <laughs> and like somebody showering out in a green meadow <laughs> they also don't advertise <laughs> chewing gum anymore <laughs> that was a big deal uh yeah chewing gum so tom what about you would you quit carnivore if if something else proved to be better yeah i mean i'm I, i'm with everybody i like a good experiment you know and uh, if i suddenly saw some compelling evidence of going vegan <laughs> it's gonna, be good. Oh, God, it's gonna get me to 150 or something <laughs> We didn't have to exterminate all the. Oh, well, vegan could get you to 150. You just want way to lift your head, your head or neck, lift off, and you'll be, you'll be like in an iron lung. But I mean, that'll get you there. You It'd something. be rough getting there. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd try something else, sure. But it, you know, I mean, once, once you turn that corner and you're like, God, this carnivore is great. It's easy to cook or not cook, and uh, you know, you feel good. You, you know, it's like. It does feel like you're reclaiming your youth, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm always talking about how to do better in the gym now than I ever did before. You know, my mind is so sharp, and mm -hmm. spent all those years with brain fog and just forgetting things, and you know, the anxiety and all that. So who would ever want that back? Okay. And ever. who'd want a long life with that on there, on top of that? Sorry. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, that's kind of my thing is that like, okay, carnivore keeps the migraines away and migraines destroyed my life for a decade. If I do anything other than my, than carnivore, cause right there, all there is is right. Carnivore fasting or plants. That's it. Right. That's pretty much the only option. It's like, okay, I've done plants had by migraine, had bad migraines, uh, have experimented a little bit of fasting. We'll see. Might do a little bit more of that, but I haven't really noticed one way or the other yet. And then carnivore, I feel amazing. So, I mean, I'm kind of feel like I have nowhere else to go, honestly, because I know if I introduce plants and carbohydrates, the migraines are going to come back. So it's pretty simple uh, for me. For you, Justin, I was going to say, I'll just tell you, there's no turning back for you after hearing your story in more detail, but yeah, no way. But um, I have one more question for the, the youngins on the call. <laughs> The whippersnappers. <laughs> I'm like the grandma now. Um, I was wondering, because some people have brought this concern up to me and I'm already, you know, well into my career, perhaps counting down. I already have my retirement countdown app on my phone. <laughs> so um, I was wondering for you um, all, since you're very publicly carnivore and obviously you get some hate and everything do you are you concerned at all for your um just like your career trajectory and the fact that you are now kind of forever in the internet identified with this sort of you know kind of extreme lifestyle because um, i've had some people warning me because i'm in hr and they're like oh you can't affiliate yourself with the carnivore and be public about that and then showing your body as well right because i'm like in my 40s i'm like throwing up pictures of me in my underwear <laughs> and i'm like please 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 don't let anyone in from work find it and i'm trying to be all secretive about it so so do how do you all feel about that like that you're now very much out there with with that presence i almost feel like for me like going on instagram and youtube was was like a rebellion because I grew up being like told to fit inside this box because I was trained since I was a kid to be a classical musician. And when you're trying to train to be a classical pianist, you know, you're working so hard to get into Juilliard, you get in, you know, you, you wake up every single day thinking how you can be more perfect, more flawless. How can you play that piece with less wrong notes? Um, so it's like this mindset that I had to keep grilling myself with 
flawless, no mistakes. You know, if you have one mistake, then you are a failure type of mindset. So when I finally graduated, I almost see like COVID as a blessing because when COVID hit and I didn't have to rely 100% of my future on music and classical music, I had this freedom to explore something that I was actually interested in. And that was like sharing online, doing like Instagram and just sharing my story about how carnivore changed my life. And I also have to say that when I went carnivore, I was, I just started at Juilliard and it really changed how I could take pressure, how I could perform in front of people live. Like it just changed how I performed as a musician. So I just was so intrigued and so passionate about sharing what carnivore diet can do like to someone as like young as me right um because i think like carnivore diet right now at least it's promoted as something that can change your life when you're really ill uh when you're going through a lot of health conditions and stuff but like you know i had autoimmune issues sure and i didn't have my period pretty serious yes but i still could you know go about life doing my best and being very focused in whatever and when I combined diet with hard work and grit, my gosh, I felt invincible, you know? So like COVID hit and I was like, time to get out this story. So I really just enjoyed every like process, like every step of the way, cause it was just so fun. I get to share the beef that I'm eating. My classmates get to be like super intrigued as well. And I get to convince them to also eat more mm -hmm. like low carb. So I was like changing lives in real life of my colleagues, but also people online. So it was like this new passion. And now I just see it as a blessing, honestly, because if I didn't have a chance to like go online and stuff, I would still be killing myself in a practice room alone. And I don't like to be alone. It is a solitary life being a pianist. So I just feel really lucky that I can be immersed with people like you guys now every single day like make such great friends and talk about stuff that I actually want to talk about. Well, well said. Ow. Yeah. yeah. I just feel grateful every single day that I, I have a career like this. I mean, I get to work on my own hours, so it's pretty phenomenal. Nice. Yeah. Who's next? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess I'll say, Honestly, I don't remember the question, but um, <laughs> I think it's something on like, I get yes, the negative comments, but I feel like I it just go back even even further to the first time we were talking about negative comments. Honestly, when I get the negative comment, I'll take the person's name and I'll say like, I hope they have a better day because like, obviously like they're feeling negative, not because they hate me, but because, you know, something is going on in their life and that's making them not feel good. But the more I just bring out positivity and just put out the good energy, I don't really get the negative comments. I mean, as much when I'm just being happy. And I instead have received many, many, many more comments from people saying how I introduced them to carnivore, how they lost 15 pounds, how they've got to the ideal weight they wanna be at. And just like feeling like, what? Like I did that or like I helped you or it's just, I want my family to see, that, you know, I want my family and I want my friends to hear hear it more than like random people but it's so it's so awesome just like feeling other people hearing other stories when Raymond says he's not brushing his teeth I'm like because of Lady Carnivore and, and JC I learned about the dandruff she was the one who told me that she wasn't using dandruff shampoo anymore and then I was like oh her dandruff went away because of carnivore and then Carney Yogi she said that she wasn't wearing deodorant anymore so then I was like oh I don't have to wear a deodorant anymore. And it's just like conversations like these when everyone's sharing like, this is what I, this is what happened to me. And, this, and then I start being like, wow, wow, wow. This is like revolutionary. How could we are just like, where I didn't learn anything in school about organ meats. I didn't know what liver was. I never heard of like, how do we not teach these things to people and th to be a voice and to like share that with people and to like bring a few more days to their life. It's like, I'll take a million negative comments because I know that it's, I'm true. Like, I know where, where my head's at. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Wow. That's a pretty bad uh, high school that uh, they never told you what a liver was, man. Those health <laughs> classes uh, guys have really gone uh, downhill since I was in high school. Um, 
<laughs> so uh, for me, uh, I'm, I'm probably going to end up in, as a political prisoner at some point in like a gulag or something of that nature. Um, probably talking about a carnivore is probably the tamest thing that I talk about, honestly, as far as like on the Internet and everything. Um, you know, probably be on like an FBI most wanted list or something like that. Um, and so, yeah, so for me, um, you know, I'm used to being an outcast. I'm, I'm pretty outspoken about several different things you're not supposed to talk about in our current society. And so, you know, I'm, it, it, to me, it's like, okay, yeah, like you might get these negative consequences in your life, right? But if we shy away from the truth if we shy away from carnivore or whatever you're passionate about it's all those people that you could have helped right or all that truth you all that bright truth you could have brought to the world and now because you're scared you're not going to and i feel like that's just doing the world a disservice because it's not about me it's about all the different people that could be helped by my story or by this diet i'm i, I have no ego about it you know um you know all the great philosophers right they 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 li live a meager life. And it's not that what they said was worth money. It's just because you can either serve money and power or you can serve people, truth and justice. And it seems not quite possible to serve both at the same time. So I take a really deep philosophical stance with it. I love that, Justin, because I feel like, and I want to hear from you too, JC, but I, I feel like the thing that's fun about collaborating with, with, um, the millennial generation is we, I just derive a lot of energy and inspiration from that because the X generation was a little bit more like following the boomers of like, you got to get a stable job. And it's like, you know, the, the, the millennials are more like purpose driven contribution, like what you're all talking about, like, oh, I'm doing something that's meaningful and positive and it's helping others and it's bettering mankind. And you're not as worried about like, oh, I need to get a, you know, a pension or <laughs> I don't know. Or like, you know, I mean, it just feels like so inspired. And I've always been kind of like pulled between, you know, my parents' generation, like they're the boomers. And then I look at, I kind of look with that admiration to the courage that millennials have. Cause you guys are like, everything's bullshit because everything kind of fell apart. And it's like, especially once COVID hit, it's like, well, now everything's up in the air. But just being able to be really purpose driven like that and to find something and then like be an influencer, that's something that is like very mm. like I just am like dipping my toe in the in the in the pool going like, oh, this seems like risky, you know, but I derive a lot of energy and inspiration from hearing you all and that you're so driven and you have so much energy. I mean, ba partly based on your youth and the zeitgeist, you know, of your generation, but also because you're carnivore. <laughs> So it's like a, you know, a triple multiplier effect, you know, so it's kind of fun to like, you know, cruise around with you guys and like, try to learn Bella sends us a little video on how to post a story on, on Instagram. Raymond still hasn't done one. I passed my test. I posted stories per yeah. Bella's tutorial. <laughs> no, all Raymond does is just repost my story tags where I tag him. <laughs> I'm actually impressed that he can do that. I, yeah, know. That, that's what I was That was pretty hard. Okay. Wait a minute Thank though. You. Is is zeitgeist an old person's word? Do does it's everybody... like the spirit of a generation, right? Oh, I know, but I'm just... Well, I don't know. I just make, I'm just making sure I know what it means before I. <laughs> 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 but anyway, I mean Robert Greene, you know, who wrote Forty Eight Laws of Power and the books about human nature, he talks about every generation is like responding, right? They're responding and they're, you know, they, we go through these cycles. I think it's every four generations. And it's like, I feel like, I don't remember what he said about this one, but I think it's, we're in a period of renewal. And like, you know, I've heard, I think Justin may have said it in our interview about that you want to, rather than fixing what's broken, you want to create a new, a new paradigm, a new society, a new world. And I, I hear that from all of you. And I just love it because we're still kind of like defending and like feeling this discomfort of like letting go of what we knew before, but you guys are like open frontiers. So, so how about you, Lady Car Carnivory? How do you frame all this? Yeah, I work in healthcare. So that's interesting. Um, especially seeing as a lot of our patients could be helped by eating a better diet. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's, it's interesting to be a part of the machine that 
is keeping people sick, but at the same time wanting to be an influence to make that machine be better. Um, that said, my bosses, the, I think the original question was, am I worried about it affecting my career? Um, my bosses this year for Christmas gave me a cowboy Wagyu steak. So wow. I think I'm okay. <laughs> there <we go>. <laughs> <laughs> I do think you're okay. <laughs> yeah. And I, I know I've shared this um, on Lily's channel, definitely. And I think in my conversation with Janice as well, but um, I was a vegetarian and I came from a history of eating disorders and mental illness. And I see my younger sister who's a generation or she's not a generation she's 10 years younger than me um she's going through the same thing right now and so i just want people to know carnivore is an option like i want her to know and feel empowered to make that choice for herself um in our current social climate and with all the social pressure that she has so to me it's how can i spread the word how can more people know that carnivore is an option they don't have to live with all these things like even if they're minor inconveniences like dandruff or having to wear deodorant, like <laughs> if you don't have to, why, why choose that? Yeah. Um, I, I don't cut. know about you guys, but I'm just so curious. I want to ask, uh, ask JC and Lily, like, have you guys checked your, um, your audience age category, like the percentage? Mm. Yeah. Is it, like very little percentage for our age, right? And most of the percentage who watches our stuff is older, which I find, I mean, I, I'm not surprised because most carnivores do uh, start because like health issues and they're already kind of mature. But my goal is to just get that percentage in the younger age category larger because that's what I want to target, like ladies and dudes my age. Mm -hmm. Got to get on that TikTok. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I want to do TikTok just because I don't want to like dance and not speak and just do motions to music. You know, it's so <laughs> strange to me. <laughs> <laughs> so Bella, when you say the, the age range, is it like Justin's age, my age, Raymond's uh, age, or, or Aaron I think and Tom? Mine is like 34 to 45 is my strongest <laughs> age range. Yeah, mine is like half, half, 30 to 45, and then the 45 and above, predominantly those two categories. And well, I mean, you know, a lot of younger people aren't watching videos on health. I mean, why would they? They feel okay. They're watching video games. They're watching, you know, reviews of movies and entertainment and cultural stuff, you know. So to, to my idea, because I'm an internet sleuth, so I kind of watch what everyone else is watching, or at least I try to see trends and things like that, is incorporate, you know, incorporating carnivore into sport incorporating it into gaming. So like I have an idea of doing like a Yu-Gi-Oh channel where I do duels like Yu-Gi-Oh duels and talk about carnivore. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. just mixing your interests and your passions together yeah. so that it, it kind of is like subterfuge. You know, it, it goes in under, un, it's undercover of the main subject. So you're drawing in a different audience of a whole nother set of people, but they're getting the carnivore message or whatever message you want to spread. And so that way you, sp you, you spread out and, you know, you're getting the message and you know, introduce yourself to more audiences. Yep, that's a good idea. Yeah, and that's what kind of Janice's angle was with sort of our you know adventure lifestyle and all of that is that we would show all these different things that we're up to and then integrate the eating into it but not really be sort of preachy and whatever about it but just like wow those guys all they eat is meat and you know look at their delicious meal and they're doing this in every environment or whatever and they're always up to something and they look like they're having fun and whatever. So it's like trying to, just as you're saying, Justin, it's like we'll hit all these other interest groups or whatever that might not be specifically looking about diet, but you know, you get to tie into, you know, whatever it is, stand up paddle boarding or kayaking or flying or whatever. Well, and I've recently added a new thing, which I'm thinking, oh, it really doesn't seem related to carnivore, but I'm doing like my, my process of tidying and, you know, going minimal and essential 
because I'm really interested in those things. And it seems unrelated, but I wasn't ever able to successfully do it until carnivore. And it's like, now I'm just much more clear and decisive and I'm patient and focused. And so I'm going through the process of like, you know, doing the, you know, Marie Kondo method of tidying and my house and my space. If it does not bring joy, you must get rid of it. That That's her, but, right? But that's the part where, I mean, it, yeah, it's, that's the, I mean, a lot of people are into that and I'm actually. But the fridge really, is going to look that way too, right? Well, the fridge will always be fridge. very easy uh -huh. to be minimal. But, <laughs> but I think there's just that, like, it's, I mean, if someone was like carnivore and like tidying, it doesn't seem related at all. And yet I wasn't able to execute that something that's really important to me without being on this diet. And now it's like all of a sudden it's just flowing and I love it. And I'm, I'm feeling so good doing it. I can slow down and I'm really present and all of those things I tried to cultivate before, but I couldn't because I was improperly fueled. It's like, I would just read book after book after book, but never be able to actually implement it. So I think there are a lot of different angles, you know, and I'm glad Tom's now posting his crazy weightlifting stuff on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that links together a little bit more for people, right? Tom's like a hardcore like gym guy and he's eating all this meat. I mean, that's like a natural nexus there, right? <laughs> I mean, well, tying and ribeye don't exactly go together. Well, you know? But I, I think it, it doesn't matter where mental or physical or a mix of both. If if you can show that the diet facilitates more activity and, and more productivity and more happiness, that's that's the winning thing, right? Like you say, we say with exercise all the time is 90% diet, but it could be 90% diet for everything else in life, right? Like tidying up or, you know, just meeting a goal or starting something new. A lot of people have trouble starting something new, but you know, you get rid of the depression, the anxiety and your motivation comes up, your energy comes up and you want to do things. You find yourself doing things you, you never could, could quite get yourself to start in the in the beginning so mm, good point i mean for me that's the bikini prep yeah oh you're yeah. right i mean i each, never would have done that yeah and i think of all of us i don't think any of us i mean maybe 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 lily since you say you didn't really have any kind of like um you know mental stuff but we i think a lot of us mentioned that we wouldn't ever be putting us out putting ourselves out in a public way or uh, recording ourselves without this diet, you know, just being willing to put yourself out there in general and do something and say something that can be recorded and then retrieved. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's going to live. This is going to live on forever. Good. <laughs> you know, I, since, uh, just, uh, I think cavities, body odor, washing deodorant and all that stuff came up i just want to throw it out i know ray and justin have heard this a few times but it's when, your favorite factoid it's one of, yeah i love i love i love dipping into the into the reads and the science but uh yeah we, we, i the tooth thing always bothered me it's like why when agriculture comes along do we all of a sudden see that people get dental disease and particularly dental caries or cavities right and it's because of um streptococcus primarily the same thing that gives you strep throat eats your teeth right and it lives on starch and it cohabitates with uh candida in your mouth and they work together to break down starches so that they have more food right so right there you see cavities sore throats and fungal infections tied together with the diet and, and that odor to, yeah and then and then when it comes to body odor the primary bacteria that causes body odor is uh staphylococcus which causes staph infections right and that that's the it's in fact it's called staphylococcus hominis for you know human beings and that too likes these starchy compounds to live on somehow the, it, it eats them even on our skin out on the outside well it lives on the inside and the outside but that's primarily where body odor comes from and so right there you know we see that like you know these things that we think are normal to you know you got to you got to bathe all the time. You got to put deodorant all the time. You got to brush your teeth all the time and on and on and on. And, I, you know, if, if that were really required for good health, we, you know, human race would have never got here. Right. I'm not saying our ancient ancestors smelled as good as we do, but <laughs> you know, they wouldn't have survived. Right. Their teeth would have been falling out of their heads and 
they would have had all kinds of diseases. They probably would have died from staph infections and, and, and strep throat and stuff like that. If they had been eating all this, all these carbohydrates. And we can look at some animals. I mean, uh, most animals don't own toothbrush that I know of, <laughs> um, you know, so that's another way to look at it. And also, you know, I doubt they bathe every day or anything like that. We're probably the only animals that probably do these things to an excess. So it makes you think. Now, I'm not saying I know the answer. It just makes you think. <clears throat> All right. Um, you want to take us home? <laughs> well, it was quite an adventure tonight, huh? This is a group that's never met before. It went great. It was good meeting uh, Lily for the first time oh. and uh, Aaron officially. Aaron, I know you from all your videos, so I got to get <laughs> caught up on Lily's videos. But uh, anyways, uh, it went well. And I like to say, uh, whatever you do, eat some more meat so you feel better. And until next time. Don't, don't fall, fall down the car hall. <laughs> and you get to turn it off, Janice, because you're oh. Nice to meet you all. It's so nice.